Hello, my name's Miss Morris. I'm a cello teacher for Whole Music Service and I would like to welcome you to week 13, day four of Sing for Whole. And the instrument of the week this week is the cello. Together with Miss Nolan, we'll be telling you a lot of information about the cello. We hope you'll enjoy it. Fact of the day. Cello isn't actually the real name of this instrument. Its real name is the violon cello. It's called cello for short. Secondly, the way it's spelt might not be as you expect. Because it's a ch sound, you probably expect to say C-H-E-L-L-O, when in fact it's spelled C-E-L-L-O. If you think of hello cello, it fits. That's because it's Italian and that's the way they pronounce the E. And thirdly, value for money today, a person who plays a cello is called a cellist. Let me introduce you to my cello. This is Philip. Philip was named by a guard on a train who had to wheel teas and coffees past me several times on a journey. And in the end, I think he got a bit fed up, but he was a good humoured man. And he knocked on the hard cello case and he said, Philip, Philip, are you in there, Philip? And pretended there was somebody called Philip hiding in the case. And it's stuck ever since. I'll let Philip introduce himself with a bit of music. <laughs> cello known to be in existence was built by a fine maker called Andrea Amati in Italy and it was made between 1538 and 1560 and it's known as the King and it's in a museum now. So time to find out a bit more about this instrument. The cello is a member of the string family together with the violin, the viola and the double bass. The violin and viola are so small you can play them under your chin, but the cello and the bass tend to sit down or the bass player can stand up as well. I wonder why the cello has to be this big. Carrying it around would be so much easier if my cello was that size. But if it was this size, it would actually make a very, very high sound. And the cello is responsible for playing bass notes at the bottom of the of the orchestra or the group that's playing. This is the lowest sound a cello can make. And that's called C. And my strings, which stretch across the cello, are tuned in fifths, we say, with five notes apart. One, two, three, and five, I get to the next string. So we're tuned in fifths, all the stringed instruments are apart from the double bass, actually. That's tuned four notes apart in fourths. So the strings are across this very pretty hollow box, a large box in the case of the cello to make a big sound. The strings stretch from the pegs here, these are tuning pegs. We thread a string, a string when you buy it comes in a packet a bit like this and you uncurl it and you thread it through a hole in the peg like threading a needle and we put that through and we tighten the peg up and the string stretches right across the cello to the tailpiece here. Then we turn the peg to get the string to the right pitch. But you've got to be careful when you do that because strings can snap. So the string winds into the peg. It comes over this black fingerboard, over the neck of the cello to the body, over the fingerboard to the bridge. This is called the bridge. It goes over the bridge to the tailpiece. And on the bottom of a cello, you have got a thing called an end pin or a spike. And that is to rest on the floor. For 350 years, cellists didn't have that luxury. They used to have the instrument cradled in their legs or resting on a footstool. But the cello as we know it now was developed in the 1700s and standardized by a man called Antonio Stradivari. He was a very, very fine violin maker in Italy. And if you hear of a Stradivarius violin, they are worth a fortune. I must just tell you a little tale. Miss Nolan, who you're going to meet later, and myself, we went to the Royal Academy of Music in London one day for a course, and a lady was teaching us, 
and then she announced that the cello she was playing was worth three million pounds. Well, I nearly dropped. Imagine that, it's a fortune. I've never had the, the good fortune to play a cello like that, but uh, I'm quite happy with Philip, thank you. Anyway, how do the vibrations from a cello get created? How do we produce the sound? Well, I'm gonna tell you now. I've got my bow here. The bow is a very springy piece of wood with horse's tail hair stretched across. Please don't do this if you're a little string player. I'm just gonna take my bow to pieces, but you mustn't do this. This is just to prove that it is in fact horse's tail. There we are. You can see the individual hair strands. Horse's hair is very tough. If you feel your own hair, it's quite silky and it would just break. You could have a really long ponytail. We could chop your ponytail off and make a bow with it, but it wouldn't work because it would just snap. So somebody cuts the hair. It does not hurt the horses. It's just like you having a haircut, so don't worry about that. Cuts the hair, bleaches it, washes it, combs it and counts it. I understand, I think there's about 250 hairs, generally, in a cello bow. We rub a powder called rosin. That's what rosin looks like. And that comes off as a powder. That's like sticky stuff that comes out of pine trees and conifers. And they heat it up until it becomes solid. And then it's rubbed on the hair of the bow to increase the friction when it, it grips the string. If you have bow hair with absolutely no rosin powder on at all, you could sit until you're blue in the face and you won't get any sound. It just slivers. It's like ice skating with no ice skates, you've got your shoes on and you just slither all over the place. But if you put your ice boots on, it's a bit like having the blade that cuts through the ice. So we put the bow on the string and I'm gonna come over here to my C string and I'm gonna bow it. And you might just see that string wobbling. I can pluck it and you can really see it. So that's what we need to do got to make the string vibrate to start creating the sound. Now those vibrations travel through the bridge here. This is your bridge. And if you look, you can see there's a little cutout, got a little heart in the middle of my bridge. The little pieces of wood that I cut out there help the bridge to vibrate. And the vibrations travel through the feet inside the cello. Inside, if you look, through one of the sound holes, you might just see there is something that looks a bit like a pencil beside the foot of the bridge inside the cello. I'm not sure if you'll see it. If you can't, you'll have to believe me, but that's called the sound post. And again, we've got the bridge isn't glued on and the sound post isn't glued inside the cello, but it helps the vibrations travel front to back, back to front inside the cello. And then these pretty F-shaped holes let the sound out and also because they're cut out in the belly of the instrument they help that vibrate. That sound, having done all that, travels through the air to your ear canal, into your eardrum and three tiny little bones start to vibrate in your ear and that's how you hear the sound. The job of the left hand is to change the pitch of the notes on the cello. If I add fingers on, I'm going to shorten the string. The string is vibrating from the nut to the bridge, that whole length of string. When I put fingers on, I'm effectively chopping off a piece of string. So if I move my hand, I'm going to do something called a glissando, which makes a funny noise. I'm going to slide a finger towards the floor. And the string that's working now, that's vibrating now, is from my finger to the bridge. So that's why that's short. If I go back, I'm going to lengthen the string again. Longer strings, lower sounds. So as we add fingers or take them off, we change the pitch of the notes. line that I played earlier but I play it for you in three different areas of the string. I'm going to start right next to the fingerboard we call this soltasto. We have to play lightly here and it's impossible to make a loud sound without getting a kink to the note. <laughs> a bit like 
like a whispering sort of voice. A good projected voice is about halfway between the bridge and fingerboard. This is generally where we play. That's a very acceptable sound. And if I go right close to the bridge, we will get a rather abrasive, icy sound. This effect is called sul ponticello on the bridge, over the bridge. Generally that wouldn't work, but as an effect it's a good one, especially with a bit of tremolando. found a poem that I wrote when I was a student and it was about travelling around with a cello having to carry it everywhere because I used to get a bit disheartened but I did actually realise it was worth it something you just have to do as a cellist it's a big instrument it's awkward but you just have to do it because the rewards are worth it so I thought I'll just finish with a bit of fun um, and this is called a cellist's life at nine I didn't look ahead I just knew I had to play I refused to learn the violin it was cello all the way. I bet you wish you'd played the flute, like travellers joke as they pass, while I drag Philip on my back and return home a crumpled mass. He's cumbersome, to say the least, and such an awkward size, and a source of curiosity to unaccustomed eyes. I moan and wail on my travels, my arms and shoulders ache, but I couldn't live without him or the music that we make. We're part of one another with a unique rapport, He's worth his weight in Beethoven, and I forget my back is sore. My playing is a challenge to up the downs a test. I sit down, coordinate, he responds and does the rest. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Morris. Now we know all about how the sound's made on the cello, I'm going to help you explore the different pieces and styles of music that we can play on the cello. Now, I kind of started on the cello a bit by mistake um, because my head teacher just announced in assembly um, that the four tallest people in your year four were to stay back. And that was because we were going to have cello lessons. And sure enough, the next week, we were all taken off to Hull City Hall to hear a really famous French cellist called Paul Tatelier. He was playing in a trio with his wife and his son. And all I can really remember about the concert is that his son brought the wrong music onto the, the stage and had to walk off to go and get the right music. And that caused a lot of laughter. But other than that, I remember that I fell in love with the sound of the cello and knew that I really wanted to think about doing this quite seriously now. And I was really lucky that about six years later, Paul Tatelier came back to Hull to perform a concerto with the youth orchestra, which I just so happened to play in. And at tea time before the concert, the cellists were having tea with Mr Tatelier and he suddenly asked, has anybody got an orange? And sure enough, our host did have an orange. And he picked up a cello and proceeded to play a really famous piece for the cello with an orange. <laughs> now, as you can see, I was making that orange shake or vibrate. And we do that with our hand when we play as well. It's called vibrato. And those of you that were listening really carefully to the instrument of the day when it was about the trumpet and the cornet will remember Mr Shaw talking about how they produced vibrato with their lip on the cornet. Well, that's an, like an oversized version of vibrato, so you can see how that works. And it just makes the notes smile a little bit rather than being plain, if you can hear the difference. <laughs> Now, that piece was called The Swan, and it was by Camille Sansons from his collection of pieces called The Carnival of the Animals. 
and that short piece was taken by a ballet choreographer and turned into a four minute ballet called The Dying Swan. And you may have seen some really old flickering black and white film of the famous ballerina Anna Pavlova dancing The Dying Swan. And this four minute ballet she took on tour for seven years with the same cellist and pianist going around the world. And just so you can hear a little bit of it with the cello and the piano now, I'm really pleased to say we've got Rosie back with us, so she's going to play the cello and I'm going to play the piano. That was certainly a big improvement on my playing with the orange. Now, moving on. I've already mentioned the word concerto. Now, this is a piece of music which is normally in three or four sections or movements, and it involves an orchestra, a conductor, and usually one soloist. Now, this gives the soloist an opportunity to do lots of showing off and virtuosic playing. And it was traditional in the classical era, so we're talking about Haydn and Mozart, that there'd be a bit of an orchestral introduction um, where the orchestra would show all the tunes off, first of all, and then the soloist would come in, but they'd like to make a big entry, so they might use what we call double stops or chords. Now this is where you play two strings at once. <laughs> use your fingers too. And this is just their way of saying, hello everybody, listen up, the soloist has arrived. So I'd like you to listen now to a, a short extract from Haydn's Cello Concerto in C, where this happens. me in a better mood anyway. Now by contrast there's another famous cello concerto by English composer Edward Elgar. He wrote his piece in 1919 which was just after the terrible First World War and the mood in the country was very sad and reflective and this is reflected in the music too. It begins with probably the most famous four chords that you would recognise from any concerto. It appears at the very beginning of the first movement. They come back at the end of the fourth movement and they even appear in the introduction to the second movement, but they're pizzicato this time. Thank you. 
concerto is what we call a cadenza. This is usually a written section of music which is incredibly difficult and gives the soloist another chance to show off. But sometimes cadenzas appear in slow movement, like the um, slow movement of Borjak's cello concerto. If you watch really carefully, you'll see that there are notes being played as double stops, so the fingers and the bows are playing more than one note at a time, and even occasions where the cellist is playing the tune with the hand here and is plucking an accompaniment with the left hand, so that's called left hand pizzicato. I think this is a really gorgeous cadenza. Now, we're really lucky as cellists because we don't actually need an orchestra, a conductor or even a pianist to be an accompanist because there's so much music written for solo cello. Probably the best example of this is the music of Johann Sebastian Bach. He wrote six collections or suites of what used to be dances like minuets and bourrées, gavottes and gigues and these are the precursors to the dances that you would probably know as waltzes and the jig, things like that. So here is some music from the Bure in C major. have as a cellist is that of a backing strings player for pop and rock groups, perhaps in a recording studio or in the summer music festivals that we can't do at the moment because of lockdown. And if you look on YouTube you'll see lots of cellists like the two cellists and Lucas Solich who play um, a lot of rock music like um, arrangements of Metallica. And as well, if you've heard the music of Clean Bandit, their lead singer is also a cellist and you sometimes see her at the front um, as in Symphony. Um, her name's Grace Chateau, so if you want to go and have a look for her. One of the best things about playing the cello is when we all get together. We're very lucky in Hull that we have um, a very large group that we play in cello orchestra called Chilissimo and we have great fun um, arranging music that we like as well. 
So to finish with today, Rosie's going to join myself and Miss Morris to play some folk music or a sea shanty that you'll all know, What Should We Do With The Drunken Sailor? you enjoyed today's episode all about the cello. The supporting learning resources for this week's song can be found on the website. And remember to join the Albemarle Broadband tomorrow at 1.30 on the Whole Music Service YouTube channel to sing along with the premiere of Wonder. Bye for now.